What's up, Texas Motor Speedway? It's time to cowboy up as NASCAR heads back west to take on Texas Motor Speedway. The Lone Star State is bringing the heat with an action-packed triple header weekend, while a familiar face is taking a Texas-sized leap overseas. Will we see another first-time winner tonight? Or will experience take home the hardware? Man, that's badass. Number 300 for Hendrick Motorsports. We'll get you up to speed on who and what to keep your eyes on before the cars hit the track. Everything is bigger in Texas, so giddy up and get ready because Around the Track is riding in. Welcome to Around the Track. I'm Kim Kuhn alongside Ryan Flores, and we are wrapping up short track racing, and we're going to the second traditional mile and a half of the season, Texas Motor Speedway, but... Great job at Martinsville. Top five finish for your team. Yeah, it was a blue collar day for sure, but I felt like we had a chance to finish on the podium there, even steal a win with that late race caution. But overall, a good day for the for the 12 team guys and a top another top five. Yeah, it should be a good day in Texas too. Ryan Blaney, very good there. But we're gonna get you ready at around the track, whether you're headed to the track or you're watching from home. Yeah, absolutely. A Texas Motor Speedway is one of my favorite stops on the circuit. There's so much going on at and around the racetrack. But first, we got three series back this weekend. Let's take a look at the schedule. We got the trucks Friday at 8.30 p.m., another night race. I've been I've loved watching these night races on Friday nights. And then the Xfinity Series, FS1, 1.30 on Saturday, all leads us to the Auto Trader Echo Park 400, Sunday, 3.30 FS1. What are you looking forward to in the truck and Xfinity Series first? Well, the Xfinity Series, they've got the Dash for Cash week two. So Eric Amarillo won the first $100,000 bonus. This week, it's JRM versus JGR. We got... Sam Mayer and Justin Allgaier, as well as Sheldon Creed and Chandler Smith going for the $100,000 bonus. Coming off a super exciting Xfinity race at Martinsville. Like, we had Eric Amarola in studio at Stack and Pennies uh, earlier this week, and it was just great insights from him. You can catch that on YouTube this week. But, yeah, it's, I think that's the story of it all. Like, JGR, Junior Motorsports, mm -hmm. um, see if RCR can – Jesse Love has been strong to start the year, see if he can come back at, uh, at Texas – and the truck series, see if Spire continue your dominance, or if Christian Eck is, you know, that, that Bill McAnally team has been nothing short of impressive. Yeah, and it's not just NASCAR's top three series out at Texas this weekend. The High Limit Sprint Car Series is out at the dirt track. Kyle Larson's going to be racing that Saturday night after the Xfinity Series race. Yeah, High Limit Series, so much buzz around it this year, and he's got, you'll see guys like Casey Kane, Brad Sweet, Rico Abreu, Tanner Thorson, there's so much talent. That is a, uh, that is not, that is like high stakes. Mm -hmm. And it's not just high limit sprint car series, it's some high profile drivers, so you can uh, you can really get your money's worth. So a very busy weekend for Kyle Larson running the high limit series and then his Cup Series schedule. So let's take a look at the Cup Series action this weekend from Texas Motor Speedway. We got practice and qualifying on Saturday and then the race on Sunday. Yeah, you gotta unload fast here, Texas. You gotta have a good balance. It's such a sketchy racetrack. Mm -hmm. We'll hear the drivers talk later about how fast it is. You're kinda on the edge Especially of the Especially in three and four. Absolutely. You're you're asking I think they use the term I've heard quite a bit, terminal velocity. <laughs> so you see a lot of guys uh, break loose there and end up wrecking. Because I don't think when you're you're going so fast if you lose a little bit of grip, that's where you see guys back it in the fence. We've seen um, Kyle Bush do it, Martin Shrix Jr. Uh, Brad Keselowski, all champions of the sport. Yeah. You know, it's really good guys. So you want to fire off with a good balance of practice and get a good uh, pit stall in qualifying. That's really important here because there's a lot of cars on the lead lap mm -hmm. during the race and the pit, stars, the pit stalls are quite small. Especially under caution because we see a lot of cautions at Texas where the whole field comes down and makes stops. Yeah, and if you have a car that's parked in front of you, you have a bad pit stall. That can affect your strategy trying to stay out of somebody's way. So there's a lot going into it and it all starts when you unload off the truck for sure. Yeah, so a busy weekend in Texas and normally we're talking local short track racing, but there's a lot of international racing going on this weekend. Yeah, as we see the Euro Series, the Brazil Series and the NASCAR Mexico Series all have races this weekend. The, the NASCAR Brazil Series has had so much hype around it. I had so much fun watching the Mexico yeah. Series at the Coliseum. I hear a stack field is getting ready to take uh, take place in the Wheeling Euro Series. Yeah, absolutely. 28 full-time cars for the 2024 season. There'll be some part-time efforts too, but they represent nine different countries. So it's really cool. Fe festival atmosphere when you get out there at those racetracks. Have you ever been? I have not, but I, I, I've heard. I've watched some of the highlights and being a car guy myself, like to see the mix of what the cars are. They kind of look a little bit like a late model stock, a little mm -hmm. bit like an Xfinity car. The guys are running with an H pattern, so it's really fun to watch. I, I like want to go and work on them sometimes. Yeah. I like, want to go down there and like work on a car, maybe even drive one, but uh, 
It's been so much fun to watch, and we get to watch a familiar face in the Euro yeah. Series this weekend. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned kind of the similarities to the Xfinity Series car, because I talked with Ryan Vargas, one of our Xfinity Series drivers. He's running the full 2024 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, and we caught up with him at Martinsville. What's the appeal of going to Europe to race? You uh, grow up here in the States, and you always want to go see what's out there, right? I'm 23 years old. I'm young enough to where I'm able to go and travel and, and, and make this change in my career. I've done this, you know, Xfinity and truck stuff for so long, and you can only do it part-time for so long before it stops moving that needle mm -hmm. forward. And when the opportunity came to go full-time over in Europe, it was a no-brainer. You got a little experience last year. You ran a handful of the Euro races. How will that experience help you prepare for a full-time stint? Well, it's going to help out a lot because in those two visits, I hadn't seen the cars before, right? I didn't know who I was racing. I didn't know the quality of competition. I didn't know where I stood up, right? Now having, you know, two weekends under my belt, four races now, I feel confident enough to compete in this spot. Now how do I break past that spot and start running? Top five, how do I start running for podiums and wins? I haven't seen half of these tracks, right? Mm -hmm. I've only been to two of the seven that we visit. So I have to be very mindful of what I'm getting into. I'm a competitor. By the time that green flag drops to the race, I want to be up in that top five. I want to be battling for the win, you know? And that's my hope is that by the end of the season, we're at least within that title contention. The race is underway and it looks like uh, Kelly In addition to best. not having even seen some of these racetracks, what are the challenges of racing in the Euro Series? Just adapting to a whole different car, right? You know, those cars don't race here in the States, right? Mm -hmm. While it is a stock car, there's some similarities, but also there's a lot of difference. The chassis are a bit more rigid. They're more suited to like a GT style uh, backgrounded driver. So the more laps we get, just it's only gonna help me get better as a race car driver. These guys, they all come from road racing backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being out here racing in uh, Xfinity and truck and going to a road course. It's like, all right, we're all oval guys. And we're, <laughs> you know, gonna go and try and run a road course. And if you just keep it on track, you'll probably have a good day versus over there. Even in the rain, those guys are finding tenths of a second. And that was a big change for me. This guy who ran open wheel cars his whole career, this guy who's running GT cars his whole career, you know? Now I'm having, as an oval guy, I have to go out there and try and keep up with these guys. And it's, it's a very unique and difficult challenge, but it's a lot of fun, and that's what made me really excited about it. Full-time in Europe versus part-time in Xfinity, do you feel like you stay sharper as a driver when you're racing full-time, even though the, the season is shorter for them? You're gonna have that consistency. You're gonna work with that same group of people. You're gonna have the same sponsors mm -hmm. on the race car every week. I, I just haven't had that consistency in, in, in years, mm -hmm. right? You know, since really my you know beginning days in NASCAR. So yeah, you can look at Xfinity versus Euro, but at the end of the day, I'm traveling the world, get to drive race cars in a professional series against top of the line talent in my opinion. I'm just gonna make memories that I never thought I'd make. Well, best of luck. We can't wait to see what you're able to do. I appreciate it, thank you. One thing I've always admired about Ryan Vargas is he's a guy that finds a way. And to me, like the essence of a true racer is somebody that finds a way to keep racing. Mm -hmm. Whether he's running the Xfinity Series one week, you can see him being a tire guy the next yeah. week or doing whatever it takes, pushing the car through tech. And his social media presence, you know, he, he figures out a way to stay around, and, and I really admire that about And he's him. got a lot of personality. He's one of the nice guys in the garage, a very hard worker, to your point, and somebody who's been recognized for all of the efforts, whether it's behind the wheel or not. You know, he was a Drive for Diversity graduate. He was a NASCAR Next driver. He won the Wendell Scott Trailblaze Award twice. Wow. Only driver to do it. And then... Last year, I got to help present him the Comcast Community of the Year Award at Nashville. So, again, being recognized both in and out of the race car. Yeah, he's a guy that, you know, I, I continually root for. Right? Whether mm -hmm. I show it or not, he's like one of those guys that you're always, when you see him having a good run, yeah. you're always happy. And, you know, he's not the first one to go over and transition to run the Euro Series. No, we've seen Bob Labonte in the Euro cars. We've seen Myatt Snyder. And Myatt's actually talked about how much running the Euro, Euro Series has helped him on the road courses when he's back in the Xfinity Series. Yeah, absolutely. Like Max Pappas, mm -hmm. Alan Day came yep. over. And, yeah. There's just so much going on. And speaking of drivers going to other series, a yeah. huge announcement from Junior Motorsports and their late model program. Dale Jr. is going to run uh, Florence in the car store race in August. Sammy Smith next month is going to run the 88 at North Wilkesboro with uh, sponsorship from Sundrop. Those cars look so awesome. Yeah, and I know, uh, you know, the Xfinity Series doesn't race at North Wilkesboro, so you have to imagine there are a lot of guys in the field that are jealous that Sammy gets to run that late model. Yeah, absolutely. I, t I talked to Dale Jr. briefly after we won the championship in Nashville. I said, mm -hmm. hey, what's your favorite racetrack? He said Florence. Yeah, I was going to ask why. We see him every year run Florence, it seems like. Why? Uh, if there's anything I know, just I don't know them guys really well, but I raced through when through COVID, we mm -hmm. all I raced a lot together, sure. and him and TJ Majors love racetracks where tires fall off. So tires conservation it. is something that those guys really like, and I think that's something that that Dale is is, is really uh, he does really well at. Mm -hmm. He's really good at. We saw him at Wilkesboro last year, kind of make a late race charge, 
and it's it's super exciting. Florence yeah. is just such a fun track. And then uh, Sammy Smith, you know, a little bit younger guy. Wilkesboro is going to be super fast for the repave, so he's going to take the reins there. So it's going to be really fun. Like we've talked about on the show time and time again, the Cars Tour is very exciting. Yeah, lots of action there. All that is great, but I am ready to get to Texas Motor Speedway. So let's take a quick break, and we'll come back and break down everything that's going to go down in the Lone Star State. Hey guys, I'm Corey the Joy, driver of the number seven car. Join my buddy Ryan Flores. Every week we stack some pennies. Talk about NASCAR Cup Series right out of my windshield. Plus, we'll give out the dogs of the week for the best pit crews and pit crew guys from the weekend. We'll break down all the money stops, all the woes, getting us some technical issues. And we'll also answer all of your hashtag penny for your thoughts questions. And we have a ton of guests. Sometimes SVG pops by. We got Raja. We have all sorts of guys. You never know who's going to pop in the Nonsense Garage. But make sure you tune in. Sirius XM on Tuesdays, YouTube on Wednesdays, wherever you find your podcast on Wednesdays as well. Come stack pains with us. The NASCAR Cup Series is headed to its second, what we'll call traditional mile and a half of the year. They went to Vegas earlier in the season. Can we take anything from Vegas and apply it to Texas? I think so, for sure. You know, the, the aero package is quite a bit the same, but the, the racetrack, I'd say race is more like a Michigan, more on throttle time. You can, you can really get yourself in trouble in, uh, in three and four. We've seen that time and time again. And strategy, you know, the, your fuel mileage, I feel like, is going to dictate your strategy. And you'll always be thinking, you know, a stop ahead, whether you put two tires on it, fuel only, left sides. That being said, Texas has shown a little bit more tire where each time we go back, I think we did five or six pit mm -hmm. stops the last time we were there. So we'll see what happens. Well, as we talk strategy and pit stops, one thing we do need to note is for the first time in 20 years, Texas is not in the playoffs. And for the past three years, we've seen one Texas race, and it's been in the playoffs, and we've seen intensity, we've seen chaos. So now that it's out of the playoffs, do we think maybe less intense, maybe more long green flag runs? Yeah, I don't I don't know. We've seen a lot of green flag runs here lately, but weather dependent, like we'll talk about here, getting here in a little bit. But I don't know if people take more chances with okay. it not being a playoff race True. or less chances, I because, you know, in the playoffs, people do get desperate, but there's less guys that maybe get desperate. So we'll see, but there's one thing for sure we can ask the drivers, and let's hear what the drivers have to say about it. Texas is just such a fast racetrack. I mean, you, you drive down into turn one, and you're just screaming at almost 200 mile an hour. And uh, you get down in that uh, corner, it kind of flattens off, and it's a little bit like a roller coaster. You're just holding on. The back's kind of walking on you. You get off the turn two, and it really narrows up. A lot of sliding. I would say the hold your breath moments is definitely through three and four. Uh, that's our fastest part of the racetrack. It feels like you're literally at terminal velocity sometimes. The car can't go any faster. Texas is slick. It, it uh, definitely starts really slick and anything out of the groove is, is tough to, to manage. So it's just trying to keep the car in the groove and um, you know, put, put yourself in a good, good spot. Wild, fast, gripped up racetrack. It's a lot of fun, but there's a lot of risk and a lot of reward. It's a tricky place, but Everything's bigger in Texas, same with the speed. Heard those guys talk a lot about speed, Kim, and yeah. William Byron touched on it. Getting out of the groove is what, what caused a lot of the wrecks here. It's going to be a little bit cooler here in Texas, so it could lean itself more to a one-groove racetrack. What do you think about that? Well, you think about the race they had last year. It was the hottest race in Texas history, over 100 degrees. I know that was Ugh. difficult for the crew. It was very difficult for the drivers. We had drivers that immediately needed fluids after. It's going to affect the racetrack a little bit, too. And so I think everybody's very, very happy that we're going to see much milder temperatures this weekend, both in and out of the race car. I've been to Texas Motor Speedway when it's like that and when it's freezing cold. So I don't know which one I prefer, but I know that the action is going to be hot and heavy and uh, I'm ready to get down there and try to execute with my 12 team. Yeah, the other interesting thing is two very different ends of the racetrack. Oh, yeah. You heard the drivers talk about it. Turns one and two a little bit wider, and then the track gets very narrow in three and four. So you kind of have to compromise your setup, do you not? Yeah, it's it seems like getting the balance, like getting the car connected it, and getting both ends to where I, I asked Corey yesterday on Second Penny, he's like, how how much throttle do you have into one and two? Like what's sketchier? And you heard Brad talk about driving down in the turn one at 200 miles an hour. They use a little bit more brake and then you hook mm -hmm. the bottom. It's a little bit more forgiving. We're three and four. I've heard that term quite a bit. Terminal velocity and you're on the edge. Like when you're going as fast as you can, you barely be that you're back to the gas. If you get a bad wake from somebody's mm -hmm. car in front of you or you're trying to uh, get out from behind the guy in front of you, you get a wheel like a half a groove too high, that's when you see guys, yeah, that turn three and four really bites some of the best drivers in our sport. We'll have to keep an eye on that this weekend. But first, let's take a look back at the action from Texas Motor Speedway in 2023. 
Drivers, start your engine! We got a hot one today in Texas, but it's going to be a great race. Green flag is in the air. Check up, check up, check up. All right, roll, roll, roll. Tires flew off, guys. Kyle Busch spins up the racetrack. William Byron is doing a fantastic job. Larson gets sideways. Front stretch, Ryan Blaney and about four or five cars involved in an incident. Here comes William Byron, he'll make it three wide. Byron cruising down to the checkered flag. He wins at Texas. Hell yeah, boys! Woo! 300! Hell yeah! Woo! Now time to welcome in Erica Davis, our resident sports betting analyst for Easy Money with E. And we have wrapped up short track racing for a little while and we're headed to Texas Motor Speedway. So Erica, how are you feeling after Martinsville? Kim, I'm feeling like we need to be a little bit more conservative this week because we were a little bit spicy with our bets, a little bit free with our bankroll <laughs> last week. But now it's time to be more conservative, rein it in, recoup some of those, those losses. Okay, so we're not going to sprinkle as much money around as liberally as we have. So with that, let's start with E's top threes, the drivers you think have the best shot at finishing top three at Texas. Yep, so my top three drivers odds that I like this week are Hamlin, Byron, Brad Keselowski, and Noah Gregson. Let's start off with Hamlin. Hamlin at plus 190, where a $10 bet wins you a total of $29. I wanna do a little cross-sport explainer here, if you will. I wanna take the, say, the NBA Denver Nuggets. If you have backed the NBA's Denver Nuggets all year long, then your bankroll is up. And this is just backing them on the money line. So my comparison is that similar to Denny Hamlin, you can probably back him in some market every week and find value, whether it's top three, top five, top 10, top 15, um, to be the best driver in his manufacturer's car, to win a head-to-head. -head. So I know it's not always sexy to talk about him when week in, week out, but I feel like he's a, a safe bet. So he's my first one. And then Byron at plus 200, where a $10 bet wins you a total of $30. He's got the hot hand this season. He's won three races of the eight. Um, so Byron plus 200, sprinkle a little cash on him as well. Okay, you also had Brad Keselowski and No Gregson in your top three lineup. You know, I'm not saying they can't finish top three, but typically I would probably think of them as a top ten. Why are they in your top threes for this weekend? Well, you, you got a good point because, honestly, Kim, I really prefer Keselowski and Gregson in the top ten driver's odd spot, but the books haven't really shown us the love yet this week. <laughs> Since we got top three odds, let's go ahead and throw a little bit of um, money on Brad Keselowski at plus 800, where $10 it wins you a total of $90. Um, I like him. Um, uh, prefer preferably in a top 10 spot, but because we don't have it yet, top three. And then same same for Gregson. Um, he actually finished sixth at Vegas earlier this year, and these two tracks are similar in the fact that they're traditional mile and a half. So plus $1,200, $10 bet wins you a total of $130 if by some chance Gregson finishes in the top three. All right. Don't forget, you can shop around later in the week. Maybe the books will continue to add some things. For now, though, let's look at head-to-head -head bets for the weekend. Yes, yeah, so I want to dive into my first head-to-head, -head, which is Bubba Wallace versus Tyler Reddick, where Bubba's plus money at 135. Tyler is minus 185. And if I'm going to go with Reddick at minus 185, where a $10 bet wins you a total of $15.41. You're not going to be laughing all the way to the bank, but it's a safer bet. So that's what I'm going to go with here in this spot. And it was very, very hard for me because I feel like this is a coin flip. And you guys know I prefer to go with the plus money driver when it makes sense. So going with Reddick here, Kim, what would you go here? This is so hard. Like you said, a coin flip. Either of them could beat the other. You know, Reddick's won at Texas before. Bubba almost won last year. If we're going, though, off momentum, Bubba had a top five finish at Martinsville. I'm going to say he kind of parlays that into a great finish at Texas. I like that. Um, we'll, we'll see who ends up being right this week um, <laughs> for that head-to-head. -head. And then we got my second head-to-head, -head, which is Byron versus Larson. Larson's minus 150. Again, Byron's plus money. This was another coin flip in my mind. But Larson, if you look at all the different books, he is favored as the outright winner. He's favored in several of the head-to-heads. Um, he's also favored to win a few groups. So not that the sports books have our best interest at heart, but if they think that Larson is hot this week, or that he's the favorite in a many of his markets, then who am I to argue? Larson minus 150, a $10 bet wins you $16.67. That's who I'm taking. What about you, Kim? In that well, one? If, if I'm sticking with the momentum team, I picked Bubba because of the momentum. I got to pick William. He won at Martinsville. He also is the most recent winner at Texas. But you literally have what I think are the two hardest head-to-head matchups that I probably could have guessed. <laughs> 
Well, as usual, Erica, thank you so much for the insight. We always appreciate it. And we can't wait to see your picks for Talladega next week. We'll see what Erica has in store for next week at Talladega. Now that your bets are in, it's time to set your fantasy lineups. Ryan and I will help you with that next. Join Todd Gordon and myself each week for NASCAR Inside the Race. We'll break down exactly how the race was won. Plus, we'll dive into the data and go in depth on race strategies, penalties, and rule changes. Catch NASCAR Inside the Race presented by Consumer Cellular each Tuesday on NASCAR's YouTube channel. A gorgeous afternoon in the Lone Star State. Three, two, one, now. We're racing in Texas. Feeling like it's about 108 degrees out there. Side by side. Oh, big crash. Unbelievable. Hard, hard hit. Everything's bigger in Texas. It is time to set your fantasy lineups, and we're going to help you make the best picks of the weekend. So let's start with must-haves. These are not drivers that will necessarily win the race, but they're going to earn you a lot of points. Yeah, my must-have is uh, is my own team, right? I don't okay. like I don't like picking my own team much, but when I think about it and think about who's up front all the time, it's the 12 car and Ryan Blaney. I know that we've been putting a lot of work in um, at the shop, and I think we can be the first Ford to win in any Ooh. series this year, so we want to be the ones that kind of break the ice. How I about you? I have to agree. I didn't know your plate was Blaney, but mine was just going off of knowing how well he runs at Texas, and he's got five stage wins there, and we know that is a big points payer. That's tied for most with Kevin Harvick. So you think about stage oh. wins, you think about Blaney at Texas, and so that has to be your must pick of the weekend. Yeah, and an all-star race win there as yeah. well. Who are you not starting? Oof, gosh. Black flag. The hometown guy, Chris Buescher. I know he's from Texas, but his home state has not been good to him when it talks about racing. He has never finished better than 14th in 14 Texas starts. Ooh, that 17 team so strong too. I didn't. I, I wasn't ready for yeah. that stat. The one I'm staying away from is is a guy who he broke a winless streak here once in 2020. Okay. But Kyle Busch, I'm staying away from that mm. eight team. I, I, when I think of Texas, <laughs> at I, Texas I always, are, are everywhere. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, they, they haven't been great, but I, I do think that they'll get the ship righted. Okay. I just don't think it'd be this weekend. So I want to keep them for later in the season when they do, when him and Brent, Randall Burnett do get stuff figured out. So that's why I'm going to not have him on my team, not have him in my garage, just uh, save him for later on in the year. But who do you have in your garage? Okay, my garage, I, this might surprise some people because he is a strong runner there. He won the pole last year, led 111 laps. That's Bubba Wallace. He would have won the race, but a late race mistake on a restart cost him the win. And so I think you keep him in your garage. If he has a clean race and you're able to make that swap before the end of stage two, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, just kind of hold him back and then decide what you want to do with Bubba. Yeah, Bubba's been strong. Another yeah. top five last week, and that 23 team has been uh, has been executing as of late. So I I'm going with Ross Chastain, though. Okay. I when I watch the highlights, he, he has good numbers. Uh, he finished second in this race last year. When I watch the highlights, I always see that one car up front. And when I looked at the stats, it backed it up 38, 39 points in the last okay. two races here. So he's going to do well for your team. But I'm going to keep him in the wings because there's a lot of races later on in the season. Yeah, I want to gotta, use him as well. Yeah, you got to save him. Yeah, but a lot going on at the racetrack outside of the races this weekend. Let's take a look at what some of the things are. What are you most excited about? Well, this is really cool. So, you know, they have that big Haas screen at Texas. Their big screen is giant. They're playing movies, which I think is a great family activity. So on Friday night, they're going to have uh, Top Gun Maverick. And then on Saturday night, they're kind of a little preview for next weekend. They've got Talladega Nights on the big screen, which Talladega I think is Nights. pretty cool. Yeah, as Shane Van Gisbergen, a documentary about yeah, this series. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of concerts, <laughs> a lot of concerts going on as well. Our buddy Tim Duggar and a pre-race concert from 38 Special, a Lumberjack show. There's there's a ton going on. And we mentioned the High Limits race uh, across the street. Yeah, I also have to shout out to my friend Cynthia. She teaches in the Burn Boot Camp, and they're doing on the big screen a workout for those early risers on Saturday morning uh, if you want to get a workout in. I don't know if you're going to be there at track yet, but uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how many campers get out and actually do the workout. Yeah, I'll, I'll get enough of a workout <laughs> uh, Sunday during the race, but uh, you can see everything that is going on at and around the racetrack at TexasMotorSpeedway.com, so follow along. And with that, it's time for our white flag. So I got a big trivia for you. Oh boy. It's, it's not that hard. Okay. I promise you should know this. Okay. All right. So everything's bigger in Texas, including the tempers, and we've seen some fights. Two significant fights happened, one in 2010 and 2014, and there was a common denominator in those two fights. Who was it? Jeff Gordon. See? Yep. Easy, right? Yep, Jeff Gordon. So a lot of my buddies were on that two car, a lot of the guys I ended up Yeah, I was going to ask. With. So in 2014, where were you? I was not there. I was not okay. on the two. Um, I was on the 21, I believe, then, but 
yeah, that was a that was a big fight. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of instigating going on there. There was a lot of people in that one, and then man, that Jeff Burton Jeff Gordon deal on the backstretch was super like weird. Yeah, it didn't really like the two drivers happened. you would never think would fight and maybe not even fight each other. But when you get right rear hooked, you know that's yeah. that's what happens. Uh, uh, it'll bring out the worst in a man. Yeah, we'll see uh, which drivers get heated this weekend at Texas. Yeah, and we'll get you guys ready here at Around the Track next week for everything Talladega. But until then, we will catch you down in the Lone Star State.